right, so we'll call the select board meeting for Wednesday, January 20th, 2021 to order. And the usual reminders, this meeting is being recorded and all votes will be roll call votes. And in attendance is myself, David Phil, Joyce Chunglo, Christian Stanley, John Muscovitz, and Jane Nevin Smith, all from the select board. So we'll move on. First order of business, we have the consent agenda. We have minutes from April 1st, 2020, April 2nd, 2020. And we have warrants AP2129, AP2129S, AP2130, AP2130S. And we have the Hadley Police Department part-time dispatcher appointment of Megan Healy. And, so moved. Okay. Can I get a second? Okay. And, uh, Chief Mason, did you want to pull out the dispatcher or are you good? Uh, that's completely up to the board. The bio is there. I was just going to read it. I apologize. I don't have a camera on my uh, my desktop, uh, but it's, <coughs> it's up to the board. If you want me to read it, I can't. Right. If not, we can just move on. No, we'll just move on then in that case. If, uh, if It's in board docs for everyone to take a look at. Yep. So motion and welcome. second, any further consent? Yep. I was just going to say welcome aboard, Megan, after we take our vote. <laughs> Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, – We'll skip public comments for now. Uh, Dr. Moser, I believe, is on here. Wait, is Megan going to show us her picture before she goes away? Oh. Yeah, she can say hi. Don't be afraid. <laughs> hi, welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was my virtual handshake right there. Nice to meet yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you for uh, thank you for being on. I wasn't sure you were going to be able to make it. Um, I've already spoken with Joan. She's waiting for your call to to get started. I'll call first thing in the morning. Great. Thank right. you. Have a good night. Congrats. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right. So uh, we'll skip down to five point two COVID nineteen update for Dr. Moser. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thank you, David. Uh, first, I, I just want to thank the select board for hosting the meeting uh, last week. It was it was very well received. And uh, Dr. Garcia was uh, so pleased to be able to do some community outreach. So thank you for creating that opportunity. Uh, I, sorry. I, I don't have uh, uh, numbers for this week. I, I just checked with Emma. I don't believe that they've been released yet. So um, I would say from the day-to-day -day reporting, I think over the last week, we've probably had a slightly fewer number of positive cases each day. It seems to be running anywhere between two and four positive cases a day for, for Hadley. Uh, in addition to uh, multiple businesses, that, that continues. Multiple businesses have had COVID, Dr. Mosler? Yes, restaurants and businesses. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Quite is a that, Is the nursing home kind of calmed down now over there? You know, I have not gotten a report from them uh, this week. There, apparently there was a change of, of uh, staff. The John, who was the spokesperson and I believe was in charge there, uh, has moved on. There's somebody new, and I know Emma reached out to them, and they said that they would keep us informed but i have not heard from them this week mm -hmm. dropped a package off for the board of health uh at town hall yesterday it's in your mailbox w what's inside of it i don't open board of health mail i can look tomorrow <laughs> morning and let you know if you like <laughs> okay thank you i will stop by and get it okay <laughs> mm -hmm. all right and any other questions for Dr. Moser, Board of Health, anything? Anybody have any questions or comments? Any further word on distribution around here? The, uh, yes, well, I just read that UMass is going to continue to be a vaccination site. I know that Amherst has a site set up. Um, uh, 
Springfield announced that there is going to be a mass vaccination site in the Springfield area. I had been told initially it was going to be the Big E, but I have not heard confirmation of that. So I don't know. We're still in phase one. The new, uh, 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 they're at, now at the end of phase one is opening up. So I'm, I'm just reading this here. Home-based healthcare workers and healthcare workers doing non-COVID facing care, including office staff will now be eligible to get vaccinated. If you go on the state site, you can find a place and sign up to get vaccinated if you, if you fit into those criteria. It looks like wave two is, will be starting, I, I would guess in two or three weeks. Do you think it would be possible, I don't know if to inquire, would it be a possibility for us to do any uh, COVID injections here in Hadley at the senior center to offer that or not? We talked about it at the Board of Health. It's, it's, I, I, I would say the short answer is no. Mm. <laughs> it's, okay. it's, uh, it's a big, it's a big process. Yeah. Uh, you, there's all kinds of uh, administrative things that have to be done. You also have to be registered for, I believe, uh, Mass Health and Medic. I mean, it's a bureaucratic, okay. uh, uh, a large task. And you would also need Joyce, you know, you need people there uh, supervising. You need, I know we have paramedics, but you need somebody there and you have to have mm -hmm. the staff and you have to have the storage and there's a lot of record keeping. I think with UMass and with the Amherst site, and there will be more sites. I know Valley Medical in Amherst is gonna become a site for their patients. And I, I imagine that a lot of people who live in Hadley access their healthcare through them. So I, I think that there's gonna be plenty of places to get the vaccine. And I think uh, financially and logistically, it's doesn't pay. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. Right. It okay. would be, for me, it would be a full-time job. And I, I already, you know, yep. I, I don't, I'm not willing to do that. Yep. I understand. I just saw that where they had the article in the newspaper last night about the Lathrop community and everybody over there um, having uh -huh. gotten the, there, but they must've done something. They had Walgreens. In that was the, through the pharmacy program. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. So Haley, Haley is willing to have it at the senior center, but somebody else would have to oversee it and have all of the, you know, medical equipment and the people who can give the shots. And yeah. it's not the buildings available, but that's all I, that, you know. I, I got that. Yeah, that's is, that would be the easiest part. Yeah. Well, I think you'd have to contract with like CVS or Walgreens or somebody like that that would be willing to set it up or whatever and not, you not be responsible but just offering the site, you know, they would still be responsible for their own medications. So, so I know that Violet contacted Walgreen who does our flu shots at the senior center. And they said they weren't going to do COVID shots at that level. They were doing mm -hmm. the uh, nursing homes. Right. They the have, it's, a, it's a federal and state right. contract. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's good to know. I, and people will have to know. So that's good. I, I do think that there will be ample number of sites and ample number of, of openings, particularly, mm -hmm. you know, once we hit March, yeah. I, I do think access is going to be a big problem. You know, certainly if someone is um, incapacitated or limited as far as their mobility, uh, those that may raise some issues. And, and certainly, you know, Jane, or if anybody hears of that type of a situation, uh, reach out to me and I'll, I'll see what, what we can do, what we can find available. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, happy to do that. Yep. No. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll continue to work together on this and it's been uh, enjoyable to have all of us uh, being on the same page. Okay, good. Take care, everyone. You also. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Moser. Uh, real quick, let's let Chief Specknable give an update on uh, a busy couple of days, I guess. Busy, busy couple of weeks, maybe? I don't know. Go ahead, Chief. Yeah, the past week has been pretty busy. We've had two, two pretty good-sized fires, uh, one chimney fire on West Street, and as everybody probably saw, the glowing uh, night sky on uh, Monday going into Tuesday. Uh, I just wanted to 
this is more just to send a thank you to all our department members and all the assistance that we got from our, our surrounding communities. Um, that fire that came in just after 10 o'clock was quite large. So as you all saw, it was a uh, tobacco barn uh, up on, on Shattuck Road. Uh, there was an exposure. The home of the owner was, um, the siding was damaged, but I just want to let you know that our brand shiny new North Station, uh, the crew that responded uh, actually responded and was on scene in 10 minutes, uh, which is phenomenal um, for a call force members to get, get there, get their gear on and go. Um, in my opinion, they definitely had a major impact on protecting that exposure. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to all of our North Hadley uh, call force members that got up there so quickly. Um, I also just wanted to say thank you to our, our mutual aid partners. So Sunderland came down uh, and Amherst came over and the city of Northampton actually was covering the rest of the community for us while we were up there for five hours working. Um, I did want to say a special thank you to our dispatcher, um, B. She, I've, I've had the opportunity to be in dispatch when 911 goes off for a major storm. And she literally had, uh, within a, peer, a matter of seconds, the number of 911 calls that came in. And every time she hung up, another one came in. Uh, she really kept her head cool and really helped with getting us the resources we needed. So I just wanted to say thank you to her and we'll be issuing her a uh, certificate appreciation and um, just want to say thank you for that. Um, also, obviously our Hadley Police Department was very busy that night. So we, uh, we did have one of our Hadley officers up there, but we also had UMass PD uh, and state police uh, were all there to assist us with closing traffic and just helping us stabilize the scene as well. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of them. Um, we were very lucky we didn't have any injuries and uh, our thoughts going out to the Tsaikowski family who did lose some of their property there. We feel really bad that they had to go through that um, and uh, we'll do whatever we can to help them recover from it. So uh, I just wanna say thank you on all that. And our gentlemen are here tonight. Our, we're repacking all the trucks and cleaning gear and, and putting hoses back together. So thank you to all of our call force firefighters that are just so integral in this and our, and our full-time guys as well who are picking it up during the day as well. So thank you for the time. Thank you to everyone. We appreciate it. And we're glad everybody stayed safe. All right. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Let's do public comments real quick. Uh, 15 minutes max, three minutes per person. If anybody has public comments about anything, turn your camera on, raise that digital hand. All right, easy enough, we'll keep going. Uh, Carolyn, you wanna do, actually, let's go, I think, Randy, you're probably here for the uh, town moderator, right? Correct. All right, so let's, let's take care of that then. Um, election terms for town moderator and Oliver Smith will trust. Um, there's been a proposal that we change the term uh, of these two positions. Right now, they are reelected every year which I'm sure Randy can talk about the fact that it's quite a, quite a lot involved in running for re-election every single year. So Randy, you want to say something about that or? Yeah, I, I brought this to Carolyn's attention it, just to try to understand why the moderator is only a year because everybody that I've ever known as moderator has been there for multiple years. Uh, if somebody gets elected, for however many year term and they don't want to do it any longer, they are going to quit no matter what. Uh, so I just think it would be a whole lot easier if I didn't have to chase people around every year. Uh, just so you know, I intend to do this for a while. So this, this is for my benefit right now. <laughs> so do we know, I, I'm assuming we have to put a warrant on the, the town meeting warrant to change the term of these positions. Is that correct? Uh, anybody? I think so. I'm not certain, but I believe so. I believe that's correct. And I think that we should is my thoughts to it because it should be a three-year term as all of the other boards are, or a five-year term as which is the planning board. So we could actually pick or choose a three or a five. Um, 
to make this a little bit more easy for people that want to be involved with, with having this position as you are, Randy. I, I agree. I think the year thing is ridiculous. So if I could get a motion uh, to add this. Legislation involved with it after town meeting? Say that again, John? Is there any legislation involved with it after town meeting or not? No. It's a bylaw. It's, a, it's one of our bylaws, I think. It's not, I don't think it has anything to do like uh, when we did took the treasurer and, the, um, and changed that into an appointment. We're not appointing. We're still uh, election, but they would want to change the terms of the election. But I, I believe that's just a bylaw. We can certainly look into it, but I believe it's a bylaw. Just have Carolyn check into it maybe and just make sure we're going to be all right with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Problem going three years. So they, yeah. It looks like the option is one or three years according to Mass General Laws, Chapter 39, Section 14. Randy, do you agree with that? That's, that's what uh, Jessica dug up for me. Okay, I didn't do any homework into that, so I can't agree or disagree, but if three years sounds reasonable to me. Five might scare somebody off. So if I could get a motion to add that onto the warrant for annual town meeting, that would be great. So yeah. moved. Second. All right. Motion by Joyce, second by Christian, and that's for a three-year term. And obviously the whole warrant gets reviewed by town council anyways before we get to town meeting. So they'll have a chance to make sure this is all okay. So um, any further discussion on this? All set. Roll call vote. Bill? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we'll go back up to uh, administrator report. Uh, Carolyn, do you want to knock that out? I will knock it out as quick as I can. Um, just right. an update with COVID, uh, Je uh, Jennifer continues to manage that and process the reconciliations for that, which has been extended, but there are some, we did upload a, a, docu a document that if you wanted to read further, you could on that process. Um, Christian, uh, I am working with Chris and Derek from Energy Resources next week to meet and discuss the energy audit. So I'll keep you, at, you all updated on how that goes. Uh, the Hadley Senior Center is doing some van system changes. Actually, they're, they're adding, with the support of PVTA, they're adding uh, what's called like a circular route, a fixed route um, to accommodate those at uh, Golden Court and the Green Leaves Complex. And it's gonna be wheelchair lifts and they're working on the schedule of that now. Um, and I can, there's more information at the senior center, Jane, if you want to add anything, um, or, uh, the, the senior center will have more information on that as well, but I think it's a really good option. This, this is the program that the select board approved where PVTA is reimbursing half of the driver's salary and PVTA just wants to, instead of having it by appointment to make it a regular run like their other buses do where at, I don't know specifically, but nine o'clock they'll be at Green Leaves and 9.15 they'll be at Stop and Shop and 9.20 they'll be wherever. So a regular route so people can hop on, hop off. Sounds good. That's you need a motion, Jane, or no? I don't think so. No, good. Okay, and so the budget process is going. I'm meeting with every department next week. I've met with a couple this week and chairs, and that's what's <laughs> about. Um, and in-house, I am um, getting a lot of support and working with Dan and Susan and Linda, Linda Sanderson. Really good eyes, really good history to look at where we're at, where we're going. And um, we've had one meeting that's been really good. And we're going to meet on a monthly basis to, to look at where our revenue is and our expenses so that um, we're better prepared as we as we uh, prepare the budget. But um, I am just really pleased to have their help. Great skills there and uh, lots of history. So uh, 
The solar project at the landfill, I did talk with Eric Weiss today. He is going to be assisting me with probably working with um, uh, the local technical assistance from uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, so we'll get that rolling. Um, there was a good start on it, but um, I just want to make sure that gets uh, continued and rolled out um, for that RFP. Um, I'm going to also talk with them about working with looking at the transfer station because we are due to get a contract, an updated contract and do a, a procurement process for that. We're several years behind in that. So I want to um, get the input from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on that as well. And uh, Eversource Energy, I uploaded that. There's a Western Mass sent their intention to selectively apply herbicides in 2021 along the power line right of way that passed through Hadley. I won't go into all the details, but that is uploaded onto board docs. And uh, that is it. Yeah, any questions for me? Anything about the uh, North Hadley? There no. is not, and we have not heard back from their attorney. So we are waiting okay. for that. There's some things that you guys had that we haven't heard back from. So yeah. my intention is to follow through by the end of the week with that. Okay. Did you happen to get back to the company that uh, was given to us by Phil Palumbo to remove the uh, pigeon poop? So I'm still, I'm still talking with Gary Berg. He, he is concerned about access to that. So um, I've had some more conversations with them, and I, before we call, before I call them, I want to make sure that there's access actually to go even look at that area because there's some mm -hmm. concerns about that. So, okay, I will follow through. Okay, thank you. The power companies. I've heard of cotton. They're doing the 20 foot radius around the power lines, or is that for actual spring? It's for actual, it's looks like it's actual spraying. Okay. They do on a regular, they have a whole plan that's a, that's on there as well. It's just control for after what they've cut down or? Um, it's a kind of a long document, um, but it is, I'm trying to find an area that. That's happens. right. Can you just send it to me? Uh, you yeah, it's it? on board docs, but oh, I can okay. please send it to you, John. Yeah, right. it, was, it was long, so I didn't want to read the whole thing, but. All right, yeah, I'll check it out. Thanks. You know what I've read too, John, in the past is they are just like spot app applying herbicides. So it's just like they're not going over the whole area and just like broadcasting no. herbicide. They're doing like backpack sprayers and spraying very distinct areas is what I read before in that Eversource document. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, let's go down to 5.3, select board responsibilities. Um, this was actually Jane's idea, but uh, I just wanted to start the conversation on this as far as looking at ways to streamline what we do as a select board. You know, we've got a lot of things that come before us for um, you know, multiple votes on the same topic. Um, with warrants now, we've, we've delegated some of that responsibility to the town administrator to approve, um, to sign off on until we have a chance to physically sign those warrants or vote on those warrants. So, uh, I, Jane, I'll let you talk a little bit about what you were thinking, but I think it's just ways to make things more efficient, right? Well, my understanding as a new select board member is that the purpose of the select board is to really run the town and to make policy for the town. And what I have seen in the meetings I have sat in is that the meetings get tied down in terms of details. And I don't know if something it's something that has to be done, but things like liquor licenses coming through or people asking for extensions. Is that something we could just give our hands off to Jennifer or Carolyn, or that's something we specifically have to do by state law? Select board. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. You as the select board are the local licensing authority and you can issue the license from your authority. Um, I can look into ways to streamline this more. Um, I thought that I'd cut it down quite a bit, but I'm happy to explore other options and maybe look and see what other towns are doing to make it quicker. But 
for changes of managers and things like that, that's what you're talking about, not the renewals. Right. Yeah, do we have, does all of that so, need to I mean, come before, before the board? Yes. yes. It, is, it is a legally required public hearing. Okay. Um, <coughs> I make them as quick and as painless as I can. I can try to cut them down more, but we are legally, y'all are legally required to, to hold the hearings and vote on them at your meetings. Yes, one of my concerns about this whole issue isn't that we're doing that or not doing that, but that we don't seem to have time to have meaty conversations, if you will, about things like the energy project or the plastic bag question or you know, agriculture versus industry. Things that the town were supposed to be leading and we're just constantly answering questions or doing things without having the time for the conversations that I think are appropriate for a select board. Some of those things, what you just mentioned, I think Jane is with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission that is within the planning board, uh, agricultural versus industry and things like that. That's something I believe that the planning board, uh, Bill, I think you might be on, uh, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, but that's usually been in their purview. Uh, yes, we can have discussion on plastic bags or things of that nature um, and solar for our, our properties that we have at the dump site. I mean our job as a select board person is, is multifocal because of all of the departments that we oversee. So certainly different than one person being in charge of one thing, whether or not they're in charge of that one thing, we're in charge of everything. Bill, is that true on the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission that they oversee the, that you, you uh, the planning board oversees that part of it? Well, <clears throat> we, uh, we do have, supervision or custody of the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. And so we can work on policy goals that can be implemented through zoning, but um, we don't have the last word on, on anything really. Um, for example, you, you as a select board chose to create an agricultural commission in response to requests from the community. Mm -hmm. uh, only you can do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is something to be said, uh, and you know, we, we try to strike a balance that um, part of our task is permitting and part of it is planning. And I, somebody once referred to planning boards as reacting boards, because uh. it seems like we're always slamming the door after the horse is out of the uh, barn. <laughs> okay, we're, not, we're going to have a bylaw, so you can't do that anymore. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, you know, that's that's fine to a point, but it's it's cumbersome too because we can only bring zoning related planning to town meeting twice a year, mm -hmm. uh, whereas there are other things that uh, it, it, the whole thing, the whole policy area is a is a bit of a merry-go-round. But what we have been trying to do, when the schedule permits, is to have one of our meetings devoted to planning type things like we did last night, discussing prospective changes to the bylaw. And then we try to group our public hearings, our permitting responsibility onto another night so that we're not trying to juggle a discussion of the future with a discussion of how bright your lights are going to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my, my thoughts are on this is that, you know, we also work, in conjunction of what the long range planning, uh, the new revision of it had been from the original and planning board was a part of that also, um, correct? And so it kind of sets that is, the- That is correct. So it sets the tone actually of things and policies that we should be looking at also. Correct, there is a, an appendix to the long range plan update that does suggest things to be looking at and different boards to be looking at them. Uh -huh. And I think we probably should be the, uh, 
the enforcer to remind other boards that they should be looking at things. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it does reflect, again, the fact that not every decision that falls under the long range plan falls under the direct jurisdiction of the planning board. Correct, but also giving us a little nudge uh, here and there that these are the things that you should be putting on your plate actually, right? Yes, yes. we yeah. will, we, yeah. we'll, we'll, we're, uh, we've had a, 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 a scrambled year. Uh, yes, we, but we have. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're uh, getting a little, as we get more comfortable with it, um, yeah. we can work more on um, spreading out some of these things, like reminding people to, in fact, I might put it on our next agenda to remind, yeah. uh, to review the long range plan and uh, hand out assignments. Yeah. I had just picked up the book when I was moving some things around here and I says, oh my Christ, we haven't really touched back on this long range planning for a while yet, because we have had so many other things on our plate, but this would be now a good time where some of those other things are uh, slowly just off of our plates that we can now start to look at those things. So I'm all in favor of that for sure. Jane, what does that sound like to you? Well, that's the kind of thing I'm, I'm hoping that this board would find time to do. Mm -hmm. So do you, have a, do you have a copy of the last long range planning? I actually loaned my copy to Haley, but I can get it back. Okay. So Molly maybe passed we, hers on to me. Maybe we can all kind of just take a look at that. You know, down the road, we've done the completion of our buildings. Uh, basically, they're basically uh, rounded out. Um, but now we can start looking at these other things. We, Like Bill said, we've had a lot of things on the on this plate for the past year, year and a half. And uh, now maybe we can take a look at these other things that, you know, need to be addressed. Well, and my question about permitting was an innocent question, wondering if that was a way to find time to have more conversation instead of the knee-jerk reaction. And fine, if permitting is on our agenda constantly, that's good. But we need to then either have more meetings or longer meetings or some way to include conversations in depth rather than just reactionary activities. Well, permitting only takes once a year. So all the establishments, unless there's new businesses that come into town, your permitting only comes once a year at the end of the year if everybody signs up for it. So that's that's not really a cumbersome no, that uh, was easy. thing. And I think Jennifer makes it as painless as possible. Yes, she does. Hi. Yep. I would just caution on more meetings. I know we've, uh, some of our meetings are very long as they are three hours. Um, and I just know that from Carolyn and Jennifer's perspective and, and some of the other people that have to be at these meetings, they don't have enough time in their day to, to do what they need to do. Never mind making, you know, three or four select board meetings a month that they need to attend as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I know that we have to find time to do some of this stuff, but Maybe there's a way we can use the consent agenda uh, to a, a, you know, a larger degree, um, add some things there that are less controversial that we maybe don't need to discuss that we could just move forward with quickly, save some time. I don't know. Maybe now that, you know, Bill has joined the meeting tonight and has, uh, you know, something they can look at and say, hey, as a town, we should be looking at something we could take you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes out of our meeting and, and concentrate on that, on what we need to look at and what we need to do. So, you know, maybe in, in conjunction with both boards that we could, you know, start working on one, one topic, you know, to concentrate on that to see if we can, you know, get back to the long range planning and what we need to do. It's a thought. Yeah, we've had uh, tri-board meetings for mm -hmm. a long time. Uh, maybe we could do some joint meetings with the planning board working on some of these long range planning uh, mm -hmm. issues or yep. whatever board that we need to talk with. Uh, it doesn't always have to be just finance and just the school department. Correct. Uh, you know, we can start bringing some of these other boards in, but um, Christian, did yeah. you, you have something? Yeah. I was just going to say that we've had the building projects as kind of like a standing line item on the agenda for the past three years and or longer. So maybe, I mean, all those projects are essentially done. I mean, the library is getting their certificate of occupancy 
shortly. You know, there was a review today and both other projects are, are done. I mean, there's maybe some punch list items or warranty items, but, you know, we could really stop talking about those for the most part and maybe have that line item be for long range planning, um, more broad based discussion. But, you know, we don't want to make it too loose. I think getting it focused would be good. So one of the features, if you will, of your joining one of our meetings is that when we, when we are in planning mode, we do just stay on that topic. I think we spent an hour and a half talking about the proposed, the new required uh, river uh, floodplain uh, model bylaw that the state wants towns along rivers to be adopting. Mm -hmm. that, was all, that was pretty much substantially all we were talking about last night, except for the usual office hours portion. Mm -hmm. um, whereas another night we had uh, three accessory apartment permits that we were going through, boom, 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 didn't really have much time to talk about anything in depth that night. Mm -hmm. And you, you have that problem too. You have the longer your agenda, the less time you have to <clears throat> apply to any one item. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I think that's going to be coming up because as, as far as I know, with the uh, selling or leasing, uh, we haven't really gotten into that with our board on which way we're really going to lean on the Russell School building. It's certainly going to come up in the planning board uh, about what we need to do with that building. So, you know, that's another good topic of what are we going to do with this building? Always seems to run around these buildings in town, doesn't it? Um, and <laughs> on what we're going to do with them. And I think, you know, um, if builders are interested in it and certainly they can do more with their money than we can with our money in town because we're uh, bound by the state law of how procurement uh, price and what you have to pay. Ours is a lot higher than what a private developer would have to pay to redo a building. So, you know, um, and it's been brought up what to do with that building. So, I mean, again, we're going to be in conjunction talking to one another um, about this building. So, you know, another topic for us to delve into on a weekly, monthly basis for sure. So I've, I've got a, well, a few more meetings left as, as chair here, but uh, for the next agenda, uh, how about I make it the last of uh, library, fire station, and senior center update agenda item. So everybody can give their final updates. By then the library should have its uh, certificate of occupancy and the senior mm -hmm. center has had it, the fire station has had it. So let's give one final update next meeting on those items. And then going forward, we can, unless we have something very important or some update that needs to be given, we'll re-up and we'll find something else to chat about. Sounds good. That's yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and if, uh, if anybody has something they want to focus in on, send it my way, so. Okay, sounds good. I mean, right. I definitely think, uh, no, sorry, just, <laughs> just thinking like, we haven't talked about the DPW in a while and like water and sewer rates, those kind of things. Um, always a hot topic of discussion that can be brought up at one of those things. Even, I know Joyce doesn't want to talk about buildings, but the DPW is definitely a place that we need to do Something. Well, so, well you know. I think we, we tried to touch base on that this year and adjusting our rates and things. I think we did some, um, but again, it's probably not enough of what we need to look at. So yeah, it comes around on a yearly basis for sure. So I agree with you that that is something that uh, the expansion or not expansion or cohorting with a neighboring town or whatever on some of these issues. Um, you know, those are things that we started to delve into. And I think David's worked on some of that with uh, uh, DPW from Amherst. Correct, David? Yep. Actually, that's a unanticipated item for this evening to talk about. I'll go a little bit later. We have to re-sign some of those agreements. So. Ah, see, Christian, what you asked for? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> that DPW always comes back at us, you know. <laughs> it is, but it is a it is a department that needs to be looked at. Uh, yeah. And here we are in a building that would be something reputable for them down there also. So, I mean, it, it, it all is in about the building and um, what's in the building. So, you know, we have to look at that also. 
Correct. Would you like to know the town the new town administrator's reaction when I gave her the tour of town and said, this is the DPW? Mm -hmm. You've got to be kidding me. No, we ain't kidding you. <laughs> Unfortunately. Did yes. I say it like that? <laughs> yes. I, actually, I probably said that when I got inside the DPW, probably when I started. <laughs> A lot of that's going to be more in-depth conversation during budget time, too, I'm sure, with the uh, rates for water and sewer. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It's coming up, for sure. All right. So let's just think about some items we want to focus in on, and uh, let's try to use the consent agenda to a larger extent moving forward to save some time. And, uh, Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see here. Well, let me talk about that real quick under not anticipated before I forget. Um, several months, I want to, it was this past summer, we signed um, agreements between Hadley and the town of Amherst, just to kind of formalize our ass assisting each other on water and sewer issues. And those two memos, apparently they got lost somewhere along the way. So um, they've, what uh, Paul Bachman for the, the town manager for Amherst has done was updated those agreements with current um, current dates. And also I think added James, Jane's name to it because it may have been before you were on the board that we signed them last time. So updated the names on them as well. There's no substantial changes to the agreement, but I would like to just uh, approve those same uh, agreements between the two towns. And then once the hard copies come, we'll need everybody to stop into town hall to sign off on both of those so we can send it back to Amherst if that's okay. So, sounds good. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, Joyce, motion. Jane, second. Any other discussion on that? All vote. Bill. Yes. Chunglo. <laughs> yes. Stanley. Yes. Evan Smith. Yes. Yes. Oscarovich. Yes. Thank you. Can't tell if it's my internet's slow or Jennifer's internet that's <laughs> slow and breaking up tonight. So, all right. Um, let's see. What's next? 2021 license renewals. Um, Jennifer, do you want to talk a little bit about this? Yes. Is my internet lagging? Not now. Okay. Um, these are the final three licensees that were outstanding. Um, we had two businesses that did not renew at all, um, which I don't think has been too bad. Um, Interstate 91 did submit a letter to the select board. I emailed it to you and, and I loaded it on board docs. So he's only renewing tonight his uh, skating rink, which is a general license and a common vehicular and he'll come back with the automatic amusements. But I think it's an understandable uh, decision on their part, seeing how they've only been able to operate, I think he said seven weeks in 2020. So um, I would ask y'all to approve the licenses on the list and um, that's it. You have any questions for me? No, so moved. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any discussion on these licenses? Just a question on that, the the skating. Are we giving them a break? Is that basically what, what what's happening? Or are they, do they have to pay right now? So after uh, Bill and I discussed it, he went ahead and took the 25% on the skating rink license and the common vehicular license. And just the particulars behind that was as soon as he can open, he doesn't want to have to wait for y'all to meet to get his licenses. So I pointed out to him that if he had his license for his roller skating rink and his common vehicular, then he could open up and sell pizza the day after the governor gives him permission and then get the arcade games going. But this way he's not held up waiting for us to have another meeting. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that it's like the most cost effective way for him to do it. That's all, you know, so he can... I, I, I think it's close to $2,500 he's not going to be paying. Okay. And he paid, it's 187 
fifty is what he did submit to the town for payment. Okay. He seemed okay with it. He didn't even ask for emails, so I accepted it and brought it to y'all. His letter was was quite reasonable in terms and interesting in terms of the fact that uh, roller rinks have been treated differently than ice skating rinks. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if there's something as a board we should do, like ask Joe Comerford to look at this or write to the governor as a board or something. Well, the difference is, is that the roller rink is inside, the ice skating rink is outside. So the ventilation- like Mullins is an ice skating rink. Amherst, the, you know. the ventilation is different because of the ice. I don't know. Having, having spent years in those, I don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> so a group of arcade owners, rolling skate, uh, rolling skating rink owners, um, and other indoor attractions did sue the governor a while ago. Um, I don't know if Interstate 91 was part of that. I do know that PINS was part of it. Um, and I think that the governor's orders were held up. So y'all should definitely follow your conscience if you want to submit a letter or anything. But the governor is definitely aware of how people perceive it as unfair. And um, I, I don't know the reason why that's what the governor's orders are, but that is what they have done. And so far they've been held up. How does this board feel about us writing a letter in support of a local business to the governor saying, we feel that roller rinks have been discriminated against and wish he would reconsider them for opening? I think we should see where that lawsuit is first because if the lawsuit has already been, well, I mean, we can do whatever we want, but. In, I think just think we should get the facts, whether or not the, the rules have been upheld or if that's still in process. And if it's still in process, then maybe it is a good idea to write the letter, but. Yeah, probably get both sides of the story here first. Um, tomorrow on Friday, I hope that they're going to cover a little bit of that. Some of the meetings we have for the uh, uh, Municipal uh, Select Board Associ uh, Association is tomorrow and Friday, so I'm hoping to get some information back. Uh, who else is going going to be on that tomorrow and Friday? Do you know, David? I know Carolyn is, Jane is. Oh, okay. So maybe we can get some information there, Jane, uh, and some of those classes of what's going on, because I see there was a, a few COVID-19 updates. That, yes, that I saw that. Okay. Um, so, all right, so we have a motion in a second, and then uh, Jennifer, could you roll call vote that, please? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Bless you. Devin, and bless you. Thank you, sorry about that. All right, uh, I'm gonna skip over 6.2 department liaison updates for this evening. And uh, let's do 6.3, Library Fire Station Senior Center updates. And as I said before, next week will be our last um, agenda item for, for these updates. Do you mind if I go first with the library, just because Patrick uh, signed on just to explain one thing to me real quick. Or he could probably explain it better too about them getting their certificate of occupancy. At least it's, informally approved. I don't think they've gotten the actual certificate yet from the update from uh, Mark today, but but it's looking good. And Patrick just wanted to come on or say something because they have some surplus equipment um, that we want to get rid of. It was all in the department liaison reports was the list of things. I think there were desks, chairs, um, you know, uh, I think the one thing is an organ in there. That's an old organ um, that might be uh, a little different for the list of things to get rid of. But uh, Patrick, I don't know if you want to explain um, anything on that list or what you'd like to get rid of. Uh, 
Are you, are you there? No. He's unmuted. We have the list, so are we able to just declare this surplus? And then, uh, are, Christian, are we trying to dispose of it or sell it or just give I, it away? Or? I mean, all of the above. I think it's just get it out of the, uh, the current, the, the Goodwin building um, so that it's free for you know, the rest of municipal use. So if we can sell it and get some money for it, great. But if not, we kind of just have to get rid of it. So. But the Why most important thing is to declare it surplus property. Yeah. Why don't we put that on um, our channel, uh, Hadley Access? Is any yeah. of it historic and part of the old library to begin with? They did check. The one thing was the organ was a question of whether that was historic or not. Um, they did check with the Historic Commission, but they didn't want to keep it. Um, so it might be a historic item, but the historic commission didn't have any interest in holding on to it. So. Well, it might be, it might be something the town wants to keep. We yeah. may have somebody take a look at it. Is it part of building or is it a separate item? Yeah, this is where if Patrick could answer, I'm not quite sure. I don't think it's part of the building. He said it's kind of like an accordion. His web, his webcam mic is going out. Just give me just a second. You can talk to Patrick. Uh. Yes, but listen, everybody else can too. So talk to the select board. Okay. Sorry, I'm having a faulty uh, webcam uh, microphone situation. So yes, I mean a lot of the the items are, that it's that are on this list are older items. There are some things that are um, that are antique items, such as folding chairs that were in, I believe, in the original assembly hall upstairs. Um, so, you know, if we we wanted to have, uh, you know, a an auction house come in and a prime, you know, look at some of those items and give us a second opinion about what they might be worth, that could be a good idea. Uh, I know that the liquidation of the furniture for the hooker school. That's what was done, I believe. Uh, but I'm not sure how that was arranged. So I'm, I'm also here for guidance uh, from the select board and from, you know, from town hall to figure out how we should best go about getting rid of these items. For the most part, these are not nice items. This is really heavily used furniture that uh, probably no one would be interested in. But there are some select uh, things that could be of, of interest. I think we should um, put them on Hadley Access, and the uh, Mike Spanknable, our fire chief, has uh, Douglas Auction Gallery in at the North Hadley Hall, um, taking uh, things out of there. So you might want to touch base with Mike and see what he's doing with the things that are up there at the North Hadley Hall, and use whoever okay. he's using. Um, if there's no interest, I'm not sure how people want to proceed. Do you want to offer it to townspeople first? Um, if they want to have any of these articles or not. So what would be the pleasure of the board on what we would want to do with the articles? So anything that an auction house doesn't want, could we just have an open house some weekend day and have people who are interested walk through? Sure. I think we just need to declare the surplus in the meantime, and then uh, I believe that gives us the authority to auction it, give it away, trash it, whatever we want to do going forward. Mm -hmm. so just, I, I know that the sooner we get it done, the sooner we can get started on the good one because we can't do things in there until it's cleaned out. All right, so moved on that motion to have um, someone come in, give us a price on it, whatever is left then we would open it up to the public as Jane suggested and have a walkthrough. I need you to declare, I need you to make a motion declaring it as surplus property. Correct. Okay. I, move, I move we declare it surplus property. All right, motion by Jane, second by Christian to declare this list of items surplus property. Anything else on this? Jennifer? Just as a point of information, I wanted to mention that this list was shared with department heads uh, in case
case that it, any of this could be reused in another department. I couldn't really hear that. So at this point, we've, we've not had any takers, really. It, it was shared with other departments, it sounds like? Yeah, okay. Yes, that's what he said. He, that I emailed his list to all the department heads and asked them to get in touch with Patrick, and he said he had nobody show interest. All right, so then sell it or give it away or to the townspeople or trash it, so. About that, about that organ though, um, we do have things in the Hadley Farm Museum. I wonder if they could chime in on that, on that organ, whether or not it would be something that they would be interested in. If, if it is an antique type of thing, because they have many types of different things in the Hadley Farm Museum. I mean, I, I would I would like to see Douglas take a look at that stuff. If there's something that that's antique that's worth selling, maybe we can make a couple bucks on it. You know. Well, I'm talking about preserving it for us for something. Oh, um, yeah. You know, I'd like the Had Hadley Farm Museum to just take a look at the organ. It seems that that seems to be the, you know, thing that might stick out in my mind of what we would want to keep for preservation. Do we have anybody actively overseeing the farm museum at the moment? Uh, Marilyn Mom Mish West. does, I believe. So why don't we invite her to look at it? Sure. Sounds like a good idea. Hey, roll call. Jennifer? Phil? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. With Skevitz. Yes. Thank you. Can we tell Patrick bye? Yes. Thanks. Bye, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. All right. Christian, anything else for the library or is that sum it up? I think that sums it up. Thank you. Enough time there. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go with Joyce. Anything at the fire station? Well, the, the uh, North Halley Fire Station, as I said, they're taking articles uh, out of the North the old North Hadley Fire Station and um, having Douglas Auction Gallery uh, take a look at that and seeing what they can do with some of the things in there. Um, we also are on a punch list now. Uh, we also need to get some furniture for the North Hadley Fire Station. And um, we're looking at the fiber optic phase two, uh, seeing if we have enough money in the project to do the phase two. Um, phase one, I believe, is completed, which is including all the other town buildings. Um, so now we're looking at uh, the other things like lighting and um, different things like that that we might be able to do. So we're looking for a final number, making sure that everything is covered as should be. And then Mike will have another number for me, probably for our next meeting. Okay, Jane, anything for nothing, the session? Nothing new. All right. So we'll move down to uh, veterans, veterans Service Agreement. What is, um, Carolyn, want to talk about that? That's the agreement uh, that you have with, um, in Northampton, uh, for the vet, your veteran service officer, it's a regional agreement. And I don't, Jennifer, you may have more details. I think it it's overdue in uh, signing. Yep, this is a yearly uh, agreement y'all sign, usually about June fifteenth. I think in all of the excitement of COVID days, we missed it. Um, so we just want to get it signed. I will say we're not the only town. Apparently, Amherst has been quite naughty too. Um, but we do need to get this signed. That's why I was asking you to take it up as unforeseen. Um, they haven't changed anything. It's the same thing. So yeah, I thought, if you wouldn't mind I thought voting on, on it. Board docs, probably three or four meetings ago, you put it on that letter. Municipal hearing officer, which was that other one that slid through. Uh, I thought it was veteran services also with the agreement with Northampton. No, this is the first time it's come up now it was the other one that she said. So I'm going to make a motion to agree for the veteran services. It has made a difference since they have come into Hadley. So I would like to continue that. 
I can second that. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Christian. And then uh, I'm assuming we need our signatures on this. So maybe Jennifer, can you send out an email when you have both the Amherst water and sewer agreements and this ready to be signed so we can make one trip? Uh, uh, all right, cool. Uh, okay. And then roll call, please. Phil? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. And what's Kevin? Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, Caroline, are those documents ready in your office or not? Yeah. Those are almost, those are almost ready, Jennifer, correct? The Veterans Services, you can come in tomorrow morning, but the Amherst MOU, I think we're waiting on that. Is that right? We just got to, if, if everyone's in agreement with that, the, all the, the, ch the changes that were in that, but it sounds like you are, so. so you may be able to have that ready. It, it sounded like they mailed a copy though, Amherst so then, pre signed by their town manager. So I think they wanted us to sign that same one and send it back. But maybe. Okay. So as soon as we get that in the mail, then we can send out an email to y'all. Okay. okay. And last item for tonight, it looks like, is the Route 9 widening. And I'm going to have Jennifer share uh, a couple of pictures. They made some changes to the East Street intersection. And they are also being flexible with the appearance of the bus stops in the historic district, mainly by East Street. They're offering a Victorian style shelter as they're calling it, which they included a picture of. Um, and then they're also giving the option that if that doesn't suit us, then uh, we could always go with just a plain bench. So this is, this is what they're offering instead of just the uh, aluminum or steel and glass one. This is a little bit, it looks like dark steel. That looks nice. It looks better than the other one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. I like that. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so are we all okay with that? Yes. But they're still not going to shovel them out, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, well, I believe PVTA is responsible for clearing and maintaining their own bus stops. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. PVTA is responsible for the bus stops. We went through this uh, probably five or six years ago when we had another big storm and people couldn't get on the buses. They couldn't walk down the sides of the roads. It was real bad. And uh, we, had, we had it researched and they are responsible for those stops. They do clean them and maintain them in the summertime, minimal, but they are supposed to maintain them in the wintertime also. Mm -hmm. So then the next thing is the East Street. Jennifer, do you have the image of the East Street intersection? They've made some changes there as well. Um, I'm not sure if it has the actual details of what was changed. Uh, so they reduced it from three lanes to two on the northbound approach lanes. Um, was there a color one, Jennifer, that had the... Um, Uh, maybe not, but that's okay. So th this is what the intersection is going to look like. So it looks like on the north side of the intersection. Whoops. Well, lost it. Yeah, I was trying to figure out on that drawing what way was north. <laughs> where, what, what was on the corner if the, where the bank was, basically. All right, so there we go. So the bank is on the bottom right-hand corner, so top is north. As you can see the, uh, the overhang over the drive-through teller lanes on the bank there at the, on the bottom right. 
And then uh, post offices, uh, upper right-hand corner there where Jennifer's uh, cursor is. So it looks like we've dropped down to two lanes heading south, plus the two bike, bike lanes on East Street. Heading north, it looks like there's going to be three lanes on East Street heading onto Route 9, plus uh, at least one bike lane. So there's a little bit of um, change there for the better. But um, any thoughts on this? Or are we okay with it? Are we, I, they're asking for our input before we move forward. Kind of leaving it the way it is, but according to the new regulations, they need to widen the lanes. So that's where they're going to get in to the bigger intersection just by widening, pretty much widening the existing lanes that are there and adding the two bike lanes. Did they, add, did they come up with a diagram from uh, Town Hall to the bike path on Middle Street on the north side? They were supposed to finalize that also. How about that? How about that one that said the rail trail connection? Yes, that's the one. Uh, it was like slide number four, maybe. Oh, that's. Doesn't really show much on it though. Is there another photo further down, Jennifer? Okay, I'm gonna just pull them up and y'all are gonna let me know because I, I haven't actually reviewed these. Can yeah, can you can you just email all these to us or they're on they're on board docs. All right. Uh, I didn't see them but I mean yeah, excuse me. Yes, I can email them, John, but they are already on board docs for people to review. All right, I'll take a look at them. Sorry, the tiny print was frustrating me. I must have missed them. Okay, well, any... I still think that in terms of our businesses in town and the complaints we're hearing about the land taking, that the double bike lane, one on each side, is excessive. Especially since we have a bike lane. I think that's part of the new street design that they have to do. You know, they had told us that six foot walk was supposed to support the bicycles and the pedestrians. And now they're putting them both in. So. Joyce, if you're talking, you're muted. And then just uh, what the previous East Street intersection, was there a left-hand turn lane if you're coming out of the post office, let's say, and going on to Route 9? Um, I don't know if there was one there before. Actually, it's right here. My problem is, is that we already have the bike path that should be used, and we shouldn't have to have that many lanes on Route 9 Keep the bikers off of Route 9. Put them back on the bike path where they belong. We'll have less accidents also. So we can certainly make that request to the state. Uh, they can tell us no, like they like to tell us on everything, but uh, it doesn't hurt to ask. All right, oh, should we make a motion? Right, I move that the Route 9 widening only have a bike lane on one side of it, opposite the side that the existing bike lane now is. Where we that have the bike path on the same side. The bike path, right. So to Mill Valley, the bike lane would be on the south side of Route 9, and after Mill Valley, it would be on the north side. Correct. I agree. Is that a second? That's, that's a second. So motion by Jane, second by Joyce. Any further discussion on that? Roll call, Phil. Oh, hang on. Christian, 
puzzle. I'm sorry. I'm just confused about what we're voting on, but I, I it's fine. I, I'm not going to vote against bike lanes, so it's fine. We can keep going. <laughs> Okay. Roll call now. Yes. Sorry. Hill. No. Uh, Chungalo. Yes. Stanley. No. Devin Smith. Yes. And was Kevitz. Yes. I, I mean, it's worth asking. I don't think they're going to acknowledge any of it. It's that's they've been planning these bike lanes in since the beginning of this project so but we'll ask yeah and and my comment on the east street um intersection redesign is they got rid of that left hand turn lane on the north side which i just feel like that was a nice thing to have they reduced the amount of lanes but they reduced them on both sides instead of just one side so i don't know That'd be my only comment on the East Street intersection is, yeah, you know, it'd be nice to have two left-hand turn lanes so you could have a left arrow and turn there. Yeah. You know, they got the, the three lanes on the south side. They really need the three lanes on the north side also. I, I, I think, I think they were, they were confused that on the south side of how much area they were taking up. And the north side really wasn't an issue because they had enough room on the north side. To, to make that third lane. The third lane already exists on the south side. It just needs to be a little bit wider. I, once I looked at the plan and looked at the measurements on the plan, I understood what they were doing, but then they took that lane out on the north side and, and they really, we really need that third lane on the north side for the emergency vehicles coming out all the time from the police and fire station. But I, you know, I don't know if they if they redesigned it already, then they redesigned it already. But... Okay. Uh, so we got the bus stops taken care of. Carolyn, did I miss anything else in this uh, letter that we need to cover? Uh, under three, um, the utility pole and guardrail. Oh yes. And uh, westbound Route 9 is utility pole guardrail. So that's that's the ones that are in the middle of the sidewalks now that they're fixing. Is that what they're working on? Oh, not up. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they are going to try to take care of some of the uh, poles and whatnot that are in in the middle of the sidewalks. So that way the sidewalks could actually be cleared in the future at some point. Uh, the new sidewalks they put in are just cluttered with stuff that makes it where the town would have to hand shovel. So there's some, some progress there, which is good. They're also not wide enough for ADA with the stuff in the middle of it. Ah, uh, that too. Yeah, um, I don't have any issue with them taking out the obstructions in the middle of the sidewalk. It seems to make sense to me. Yeah, there's no problem with that. But of course, uh, that last 12 inch, 10, 12 inch storm we had, the DPW went through and cleaned the sidewalks on both sides of Route 9. And then the state came through with their wing and took all the snow and put it right where they just cleared the sidewalks. It's just, it's an ongoing mess oh, every time it's snow. Okay. All right. I think that's it for this topic. Um, I think we can have the uh, Richard Massey from DOT come back and speak with us one more time uh, next meeting. And so we, we can kind of hone in on, it looks, it sounds like the bike lanes now and um, maybe the East Street lanes as our concerns going forward since we've taken care of the bus stop and, and the extra lanes on East Street. And if I can just ask the members, I may reach out to you individually just to uh, get a little bit more detail about what you just shared so I can give Richard the response ahead of time so he'll be prepared. But uh, you know that area better than I do. So some of the areas you are pertaining to would be new to me. So I wanna have the right information. And I, and I can send that back to everybody to make sure what I'm giving Richard is the accurate information. I would feel more comfortable with that. 
Sounds good. All right. Any um, unanticipated business that I didn't cover? Anything else? Any announcements for this evening? I just have my have my usual. Did anybody else have anything? Yeah, hey, Caroline. Oh. Did, did Massey? Did they have a map of how much property they're taking from some of these property owners? Because I've been getting a couple of conflicting reports from a few property owners that have complained to me, and I want to bring it to the board or. If it's if it's somewhat of an issue, maybe we are, whether we address it or not, I, I think they're going to do whatever they want anyway. It sounds like, but if, if they could show a map showing how much property they're actually going to take, or a list of the properties they're going to take, or a list of the properties they're going to take, yeah. Yes, I can do that. All right. Sounds like it's all you, Joyce. Okay. Um, it's been quite a year and we're continuing into this new year. Um, I have a few passings. Um, Gary Olson. Uh, so the select board sends their condolences to his family. We have Lynn Rule. Our condolences to her family. We have John Lipsky. Um, served in the United States military. We have uh, so condolences to his family. I believe I'm not sure, but I'll redo it again. Joanne Modinsky. Um, she is the mother of Joe Modinsky, who was a teacher at Hopkins Academy. But Joanne herself used to be a Hadley school nurse, and she had also had worked in the operating room and med surge at Cooley Dickinson. And she was a Cooley Dickinson uh, grad from their nursing school over there. And then we also had, and I think I did it before, but I'm not sure, was Lois Warner. Um, she lived on West Street and uh, she was quite active in many things, Mother's Club and things around town and uh, very active. You could always see her on the fields participating in her uh, children's activities. So um, many condolences to these families from the Hadley Select Board. Any other announcements? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Anything? Phil? Yes. Tungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Kevin? Yes, uh, Joyce, I, forgot, I couldn't get my mute off quick enough, but anybody interested in the political outlook of the town of Hadley, nomination papers are available for all positions. That away, John. Good to go. All right. There's a list on the town website. Next meeting is February 3rd. We'll see you then. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Good night. Thank you.